Hello and welcome back to our Substance Designer tutorial on creating texture atlases. So in this video we're going to finish things up. Uh, we're going to uh, export a substance of our atlas and uh, we're going to jump back into our 3D program and assign the UVs uh, so that they fit this atlas. So to start, uh, let's uh, go ahead and take a look at our atlas. So here you can see that you know I have uh, you know a few tile materials here. Uh, I've got a ton of wasted space in this atlas. Uh, I'm actually not going to finish um, you know, adding materials to this. Uh, we're only going to work with these for this example. Uh, so in this case, I probably should have, instead of making this a 2K, I should have left this as a 1K texture. Um, or you know, obviously you would fill out the materials as, as much as you can uh, to fill up the atlas, uh, which is the whole point behind the atlas. Uh, so what I'm going to do in this case is since I have this kind of blank area, uh, I'm just going to uh, fill it with just a black material. So uh, let's go and grab my base material to do this. So base material. And I'm going to set the color here to uh, black and my roughness. I'm just going to set this all the way up to white. And so we have this in place. Let's grab hold of our material here. Let's copy and paste this guy. And here, let me just make sure I have this set correctly. Yeah, all right. And uh, let's put this, let's just hook our materials up like this. Yeah, and this will work for what we want to do. And let's just output everything. Okay, so um, we have this set up and uh, we're ready to go. So probably what I would do uh, before is, um, before I actually export this, is we want to expose uh, some parameters on our materials. Uh, because that's where the true power in this technique comes in is not only do we have like this texture atlas that we're uh, that's being used with this kind of modular geometry and it's very optimized in the way that you know we're uh, have this ratio to the geometry size to the pixel count in the in the texture atlas itself but we can also take our materials and expose all of our parameters so that we can have the bricks be you know we can change the bricks in the atlas so let's do that uh, with the bricks material selected I'm gonna hit this button here and I'm going to expose parameters and if you haven't seen this before this gives us a nice UI for exposing multiple parameters at the same time I'm just taking uh, all of my uh, advanced properties basically let's do uh, the bricks uh, X amount, Y amount, and let's do age here, and then let's do our brick colors. So here it's just really quick. You can see that I can go in and, and, and switch these guys up. And then if I want, I can change any of these inputs. Uh, I can change any of these values here, what these are going to be. So if I wanted all these just to be, uh, instead of saying advanced parameters, I wanted to say, um, you know, actually this is the way I would probably do it. I'd put it in this group. So I want it to be under bricks. So here uh, I would just go through and just copy and paste this guy in here. So bricks, and there we go. All right, so now when we go out here to our uh, main uh, group here, we've got this bricks group, uh, and then we have um, our material. Now we could do the very same thing here for all of our other materials, and uh, you know, for instance, for the concrete here, uh, we'll do this. We'll do uh, well here, not that. Let's do this one here. So concrete pavement, we'll select this guy. And uh, here I'm going to expose uh, parameters. And let's just go to those advanced parameters that we want to work with. Move this guy out. Uh, let's add uh, water level, tile color, and ground color. So we'll do something like this here. Uh, for the parameter itself, uh, I'm going to change this to just concrete. And I'll just copy it. And we'll just set it up here like this. All right, so then we have this in place, and we'll click OK. So out here on the root level of our graph, uh, we're now going to have uh, brick and concrete. So as for this example, we have a couple of these materials with parameters exposed. So now I'm, I'm going to export this guy. So here, let's go, uh, while we're at the root uh, of our graph, let's go to our base parameters. And let's switch this from absolute now to relative to parent. Uh, that means that this is, can now be dynamically resized. Notice here that our tile system is now still, everything's aligned, everything's working, um, and we're good to go. So at this case, uh, let's go back to our demo here, and we're going to save, and I'm going to publish this. So here I'm just going to throw it on the desktop, and we'll replace it, and click OK. So one other thing I'm going to do, uh, let, let me go back to uh, my graph. Let's switch it back to absolute, and I'm just going to set it back to 24, um, 2048 by 2048. And I'm just going to save out 
uh, basically my base color here from the uh, from the 2D view so that I, when I bring this back into Maya I can load this image up into my 2D view uh, so let's just take this guy and I'll just call it test uh, JPEG just for now alright and we'll save this out now I'm gonna jump back over to Maya and we're going to start to arrange our UVs okay so here we are in Maya and uh, we're gonna start to work with our UVs uh, so let's do this uh, let's go into our uh, Let's go into our hypershade and let me go to my textures tab here. So this is a file one. Um, it actually should re reload for me, but basically here's what I'm doing. I'm going in and I'm just loading in test. Okay, so I have that and it's in place. Uh, let's now uh, go ahead and just split my views up. I just want to see my, um, I'm actually just going to load up my UV texture editor here. So we'll just split our screen view here and we'll put this in place. Okay, so um, if we take a look at what we have, you can see that I've already laid out the UVs in a sense that I've unwrapped them. So the UVs have been unwrapped, but you can see that I haven't placed the UVs yet, okay? And so, like I said, we kind of do this backwards. Um, you can do your unwraps and everything, you know, get that, uh, you know, squared away, but where we actually place the UVs on the texture, that's done after the fact, because, you know, we don't really worry about the UVs uh, while we're creating the atlas. The UVs are going to conform themselves to the atlas. And uh, something else to note about that, again, if we go back to the actual, um, this concrete. So if we look at the concrete, remember how, you know, this, this piece here that's going to, I'm sorry, not the concrete, the bricks. If we look, this here is my brick wall, and notice that it had that specific resolution. It was uh, 1075 uh, pixels high by uh, 768 pixels wide. So we have this specific aspect ratio for this, um, um, you know, for this brick wall. If we look at the UVs associated with that, you can see that the UVs themselves, let me just kind of line this up here. This is another important part of, of how all this works. The aspect ratio matches the object size. So like I said, everything is, 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 um, is very relative to each other. So the pixel count uh, that we're using has been measured based on the, uh, the system that we put up into place being one unit is equal to 256 pixels. Uh, when I uh, unwrap my UVs, I made sure that my UVs are, are retaining the same uh, size and aspect ratio here to their mesh counterpart or their the, you know the face uh, that it actually represents. And so now uh, we're going to just start to apply the actual uh, geometry here, or excuse me, the texture. So let's select this geometry and let me create a new material for this guy and I'll just call it a blend and here we'll just call this um, uh, Atlas. All right, and uh, here, uh, let me just go and grab uh, my rendering editors, my hypershade. Okay, so here's my hypershade. We'll go to textures. This is my texture here that I'm working with. So uh, I'm just going to middle mouse, uh, click and drag, and just place this here into my color, and then we'll close this guy down. All right, and so here in my viewport, I've got my, uh, my texture here is, uh, is enabled, so now I can view the texture. And so here in my uh, UV view, I'm going to enable the texture here. So now I can start to just place my textures where they need to go. And so here I'll just kind of uh, put this into place. So let's grab hold of this guy, this face. And so here's the face. And we're just going to place this. And so uh, here it, it, it's close to matching up because the way I did this unwrap uh, projected and kept the aspect ratio when I did it. Uh, but, you know, we'll just kind of start to line things up. So we'll put this here. So that guy's lining up there and then we'll just line him up here and let's just make sure okay so we need a little bit of more room uh, so let's go and grab this edge and just scale this guy up and again we'll just select this guy and just zoom in just all the way and just make sure that we're just kind of lining this up so that it fits the texture atlas and that looks pretty good there and so here in our view and let me turn off that wireframe shade because I think it's kind of getting in the way. All right, and so when we look at what we have here, this is starting to look, uh, this is looking pretty good and it's matching pretty well, you know? And, um, you know, given the fact that our object scale is now matching the pixel count, uh, we have a really good texel density here for this object. And so you can see how using these atlases in this way is very efficient. Okay, so next, let's grab our concrete. So here's our concrete. Uh, we'll grab the face here. And we're going to put this guy into place. All 
All right, so next up, we are going to grab hold of this guy. Where is he? There we go. We'll just grab these UVs here, and he is going to go in this area. All right, so now we're in place here. So here you can see we get the wall done. So now if I select uh, this modular piece of geometry, I can duplicate it and I'll hold down V to vert snap and let's just vert snap this guy. And now you can see because of the seamless nature of our texture atlas, remember our bricks were tiling uh, horizontally uh, as well as our two concrete materials, uh, we now have this seamless connection between our two sections of geometry. So next, let's move on to uh, this corner piece. Now the way this corner piece was modeled, you can see that you know if we look at this guy, uh, the corner piece, so this side here uh, is basically half of this piece here of the wall. So you've got these two halves of the wall. So if we look at this face and this face uh, equals uh, this entire face here. And this section here is half of this section here. And so we can use that to our advantage. Uh, so here, let's go over to our object and let's go open up our UV texture view here and uh, let's just assign our material that we're working with so I'm gonna go to my existing materials and I'm gonna grab Atlas alright so we have this guy in place now um, let's go over to our faces here let's select these guys and let's just put them in place Okay, so here you can see that, you know, again, we have the two sides here. So here's the, you know, the left and right side uh, of these two faces. So again, remember, these are just half. Uh, and so once this comes here in the middle, it's just going to be seamless again. And so now you see how we can get this corner piece in place here with our atlas. So next, we'll just need to add in our actual, um, uh, the two pieces of concrete. So let's grab this guy here and we'll put him in place. Now this guy here is is, is going to have a seam on one side uh, because of the way we have this. So here let's just place it like this. Okay so that looks pretty good uh, on this corner. Uh, but we probably would end up with a seam here. Now what we could do, uh, ultimately what I would do if, uh, if this was production, is uh, for this piece, um, right here at this center, uh, it would be really good is if in the texture atlas itself we were to have just added like this, uh, like a, a, a crack or a divide uh, between these two pieces of concrete. So like in an actual sidewalk where it's more square like this instead of this elongated piece. And then you can use uh, that, that piece right there uh, for these, uh, or you could use where that separator is between the two halves of the, con or to the two sections of the concrete. You can use that separator uh, in areas like this here where we need to place, um, you know, a crack line here and here and so on. So ideally you'd put like a separator in the concrete here on the edge, one in the middle and one on the edge here, and then you could align it up, uh, you know, pretty easily. So uh, on the two edges, instead of it being like in this piece here, it'd be like one uh, complete separator. And on the two edges, it'd be like half of the separator and half of the separator. And they could add up to where uh, when you add these, you'd then see the concrete uh, divide uh, here in the sidewalk. Um, so let's now go in and fix uh, this portion here of the concrete. Uh, so we'll come over here and let's grab these two halves and let's just move these guys into place. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do next is uh, we'll take this piece here, uh, let's duplicate it, and we'll just move this guy over, uh, let's rotate this negative uh, 90, and then here we're just going to snap it, so holding down V key, and we'll just snap this guy into place, and so now uh, we've added uh, this extra corner in here. So now I just need to work on this tile here. Um, I'm going to go in and just assign the Atlas material. And I actually already have this in place. Uh, so let me go back to my UVs. And you can see here where I have aligned uh, this to the UV section. Uh, now there's one mistake I made with this uh, because it wasn't tiling correctly. And so if I go back here to Substance Designer, uh, what I did 
was um, the way that I have it set up in this uh, particular uh, situation because again it's being masked for this uh, and so what I did was I came over to uh, my make it seamless so I did enable the make it seamless on the horizontal axis and then I set the scale to 2 uh, in this case so that ended up making this uh, this here seamless uh, in both the horizontal and vertical again because it's a square uh, mass size that we're using so then I just republished the substance and saved out uh, this image uh, here that I'm using as my guide uh, so now that I have this in place, if we duplicate this guy and we just vert snap it, uh, here you can see that it is tiling correctly. Now, like I said, that's horizontal. Uh, we can also go and grab this guy here. We can duplicate him and then we can vert snap him this way vertically. So now he's tiling this way and this way. So when, like again, like I said, whenever you have a tile uh, and it's a square tile and you do make it seamless, uh, you can then tile horizontally and vertically uh, with that system. Okay, so now you can see that you know we basically have kind of our environment mapped. Uh, we do have our wood here, uh, so we can start to kind of work with this wood section. Uh, let's just do that real quick. Uh, so here's our wood. Let's come in here and let's just assign this uh, my atlas. And here I'll just grab the UVs and just drag and drop and place these guys over into this area. So like I said, we, we uh, set this up so that we could have uh, a couple variations to this. So here I'm going to place uh, the wood in this area and then I'm going to duplicate uh, this plank here and just move it over and you know maybe do something like a slight rotation or something like you know just kind of how I had things kind of set up before and so now uh, I just want to vary this a little bit so I'm going to go into the faces and now I'm just going to move these guys over. Uh, so uh, let's just do this here. Let's grab this guy and this guy. So now you can see uh, the two UVs together and how they're just kind of overlapping into this wood section here. And so with that, um, you can see uh, how we can start to utilize uh, this varying wood section that we created here from those different planks. Uh, and it's a bit longer than what I made it because they also have the overlap of the sides and stuff And I didn't actually uh, account for that in my measurement. So notice here uh, You know, you've got this overlap on the side So what I may want to do is just select this guy and then just move it all the way over actually make sure that I select the entire shell and uh, Just move the whole guy over like this Okay, so it's okay if those corners overlap or whatever uh, you know the idea is that you know we can have overlapping geometry within this uh, within this texture atlas. Uh, excuse me, overlapping UVs. I mean uh, within this texture atlas, because what you would end up doing uh, with this asset is uh, once we have all this done, okay, this is going to work fine for you know the repeating uh, uh, values that we're going to get uh, you know for this particular uh, environment. However, uh, we're only working with uh, again. Let's go back to our UV editor. And let me bring this guy over here. You can see that we only have this one UV set. So what I could do is just assign a second UV set to to all the objects, uh, and then you know just have everybody selected, and then just do a layout so that there are no overlapping UVs. Now that second UV set is going to be for uh, my light map bake, or you know if you're in your game engine, if it will you know handle that for you, you could just let it do it automatically, such as with Unity. If if it doesn't have those UVs. Uh, you can have an option so it'll set to generate those light map UVs. So here's our scene inside of UE4 and uh, this is utilizing our texture atlas, our substance texture atlas that we've been creating. And so uh, like I said earlier in the video, one of the main benefits to utilizing this uh, texture atlas as a substance is that each one of these material, these tile sections of the material have parameters that can be changed. So here, I'm just going to open up the substance parameters for the atlas that we have. And uh, we can do uh, any number of uh, parameter changes, uh, you know, anything that we've exposed. Uh, so for instance, let's change our brick color. So I'm going to come over and instead of using this lighter value, I think I'm going to darken this just a bit. And so here, let's just get something like maybe this here. And uh, we can also go in and change the age. Uh, so right now the, the bricks are fairly smooth. Uh, let's just dial in some uh, age to this. Uh, here we'll just kind of zoom in so you can see what this is actually doing here. And uh, let's take that age parameter and just kind of pull it back down. And so you can see that that's changing. Uh, so a lot of different parameters and things that we can change with this here. And uh, you know this is just a small sample of, of, of some of the uh, kind of functionality that you can build into these texture atlases. 
So that's going to conclude this tutorial on creating texture atlases. Uh, as you can see, it's a very optimized way to work. Uh, we've really maximized our texel density in that you know we've started with our geometry size, we've measured that, we've assigned a specific uh, ratio uh, pixel to uh, unit size, and so by doing so again, we've been able to uh, you know maximize that that texel density. Keeping this as a substance, it makes the texture atlas just as modular as the geometry asset itself. You'll be able to download the Atlas Maker node uh, that was showcased in this tutorial. Uh, it's going to be uh, part of the support thread. So that link is going to be placed in the description here of this video. So if you have any questions, please visit that forum thread. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and that you find the Atlas Maker to be a helpful utility. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time.